Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla video and today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different and very awesome. Do you have a bunch of sad looking Gunpla just standing there that should be in the air in awesome aerial dynamic poses? Of course, there are a multitude of different action bases available from Bandai as well as other companies. But if you're like me, you might be miles upon miles away from a store in which you can buy those or even worse, you may just have no money. And if you're like me, you like spending your money on Gunpla, not on bases. Well, what if I told you there was a way to make free action bases? Now, I'm not going to take any credit for this whatsoever. I just saw it this morning on Reddit and this idea was posted by the absolute genius that is Akazaku. So I will put a link to the post on Reddit down there in the description. Make sure to give him tons of upvotes for this because it is so simple and so genius. You have to do it. Basically, you know those runners that you throw out in the trash? Well, that's your action base. So basically in this quick little tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to change trash into literal treasure. And once again, this was Akazaku's idea. Give him them upvotes. If you're not part of the Gunpla Reddit by now, well, you should be. Now this is incredibly simple. All you need is your leftover runners, your nippers or whatever cutting tool you just cut your Gundam out with, and a lighter. That is it. So simple. So potentially the most difficult aspect of this is choosing the runner you want to use. Obviously it has to be a pretty big one so it can support the weight of your Gundam. So I usually would suggest a darker one so it won't stand out that much. But if you want one that will suit the color of your Gundam, go with it quite nicely or something like that, you can really use any one as long as it's a fairly large runner. And you want one with a circular section in the middle, but most of the larger ones do have that. And then starting from that circular section in the middle, you will find that there are these longer sections moving out from that and you're going to want to pick the longest ones and that would be this one right here. This section has a lot more going on so this is more weighted which will be better for the actual base. As you can see I still have left the bits that are left over on this. If you've got more bits left over, even a full area of bits left over, that might look pretty cool. But anyway, we're basically going to cut this in half essentially while maintaining this section here. So that is chopping at these sections here, removing all the back part except for what is going to be the stand part of your base. And then you'll be left with something like this. These little outcrops here, just for aesthetic reasons, we're going to chop those off. So snipe, snipe. So that is what we have right now. Flipping around to the other side and if you look at it like this, these will get in the way of it sitting flat. So anything that outcrops up like all these parts, snip them off as well. So there we go, that is pretty nice and flat. You may want to get rid of some of these for aesthetic reasons, but I think the weight is important, so leave them there. And from here, you kind of get one chance to do this, so pay a little bit of attention to this. We are going to use the lighter to melt this section and bend it upwards. Not burn, just soften it enough that you can move it. So of course, be careful whenever you're messing with fire. Don't set off any smoke alarms or anything like that. Don't burn yourself and keep it quite a bit away from the plastic. There really is a less is more approach to this. You can always add more heat and get it more flexible, but if you burn it and destroy it, well, then it might be irreparable. Once it's flexible, bend it up again. Be aware of burning yourself and hold it in place until it cools. You can blow on this to help it cool. So then what we end up is with this right here. So depending on what angle you want your Gundam at, you may want to bend this as well. If you want it completely the right way up, then you're going to want to do the exact same thing up here. Melt it slightly down here and then bend that too. So that is what you'll end up with there. This may be a bit on the weak side, so I like to reinforce it like what I did with this one over here. So to do that, basically taking one of the longer, thicker pieces from the bit of the runner you cut off, chop off all that extra stuff, cut one to size, and then using the lighter once again, we're going to melt this. And this time actually melt this onto the other one in order to give it some more strength, some more structural integrity. So you are going to be melting it this time around, so be careful. So there is pretty much what you'll get once you melt those pieces together. You can probably do a lot prettier of a job than I did right here, and on a darker runner that won't be as noticeable. But all in all, there you go. This is a bit of a small runner, so this will be better for smaller kits like the Leo here. And depending on the particular kind of runner that you use, this may fit perfectly, may be a bit thick and will have to be whittled down, or it may be a little bit on the thin side and might have to be thickened by melting it another little bit. If in doubt, melt it more. And there we go, with a bit of modification that is an absolute 
perfect fit. So once again, if you do want one that's a little longer than this, you're going to need a bigger runner. So if you are planning on making a whole bunch of these particular stands, I do recommend the inner frame runners of Master Grades. These are nice and thick, nice and heavy, and they're a grey which isn't too obvious when they're on the shelf. So one more time, I'm going to throw this one together. And as this is a master grade runner, it is pretty thick, so what we're gonna have to do here is whittle the top of that down a bit, either with a hobby knife, the nippers you just use, or a file or something like that. I prefer to make it a little bit tapered, that way it will slide in easy and hold in there. So that is it for the tutorial. It's quick, easy, and most importantly free, and all it takes is a few items that you'll have lying around anyway. So if you've never had a reason to hold on to those runners before, now you've got one. Once again, a shout out to Akazaku over on the Gunpla Reddit who, at least as far as I've seen, came up with this idea. So if you're not subscribed to the Gunpla Reddit already, get over there, get subscribed, and drop some karma Akazaku's way. But as always, thank you very much for watching, make sure to come back for more Gunpla videos, and I'll see you next time.